remains in a few moments. But we start with a startling report on grand corruption in Kenya that could jolt the political landscape. The report leaked to a respected British newspaper alleges that former President Daniel Arap Moy and his associates siphoned over 130 billion shillings out of Kenya during his 24-year reign. The investigation was commissioned by President Kibaki's government and was carried out by Kroll Associates. But as Robert Nagila reports, that document which was given to the government has never been acted on for the last three years. Time and time again, former President Daniel Arap Moy and his family were linked to corruption dealings, but each time the former president came out fighting, insisting he was as white as snow. But this morning, all that appeared to change. A British daily, The Guardian, published as its top story a report by international risk consultancy, Kroll Associates, alleging that Moy and his associates stole over 130 billion shillings from public coffers during his 24-year reign. Among some of the prominent names mentioned, apart from Moy himself, are his son Gideon Moy, reported to be worth over 71 billion shillings. Philip Moy, estimated to be worth 50 billion shillings. Nicholas Biwot, Joshua Coulet, Noshad Merali, Charles Field Marsham, a son-in-law to Biwot, the Putneys and the Akasha family, among others, all this as per the estimates dating to 2004. The report lists those behind Mobitella, who own 5% of Safaricom, as Nicholas Biwot, Gideon Moy, and the man say to be Biwot's son-in-law, Charles Field Marsham. It details how the Moy family and associates allegedly colluded with Italian drag lords and printed counterfeit money. They are said to own assets including multi-million pound properties in over 30 countries, including a 10,000 acre ranch in Australia. And it gets worse. In 2003, President Mwai Kibaki commissioned the Kroll investigation into the Kanu regime in an effort to recover stolen money. Attempts to get details of how far the investigations were was always shot down. But it's now in March that the government received the report in 2004, but failed to act on it. Even more surprising was the government's denial of the mysterious ownership of Mobi Talea, despite having the report in its hands. I'm not even sure what the Hula Baru is all about. I can only talk about Telcom Kenya because that's our 60%. And our 60% is intact and it's safe. And that's what we are negotiating on. And it now looks increasingly likely that this endorsement by Moi earlier this week... I'm convinced that President Moi Kibaki ought to be given a chance to complete the constitutionally accepted two-term tenure. Will be viewed with a lot of suspicion. When contacted last night, all Kroll would say is, we cannot confirm or deny that the report is what it purports to be. Reached for comment, Justice and Constitutional Affairs Minister Martha Karua, who is in Australia, said... She was not aware but promised to issue a statement when she gets back. Meanwhile, an angry government spokesman, Alfred Matua, termed the leaking of the report another John Gidongo ploy to set the media agenda in Kenya. Tomorrow promises to be a very interesting day indeed. Robert Nagila, NTV Tonight.